Hello and welcome back. We are picking up where we left off on number 49. On the coordinate grid below, quadrilateral ABCD has vertices with integer coordinates. Quadrilateral QRST is similar to quadrilateral ABCD with point S located at 5, negative 1 and point T located at negative 1, negative 1. Which of the following could be possible coordinates for point Q? So, um, the first thing I like to do here is read through my problem. <clears throat> first, I want to remember what similar means. Similar in quadrilaterals, you want to remember in any, any um, figures, means the sides will be in proportion. So that's going to help us out with this one. Um, so I'm going to... I'm going to place, well, they already did 5, negative 2, excuse me, 5, negative 1 is where our S is, and T is at negative 1, negative 1 here. And I'm going to first figure out what the um, ratio is from side to side, or the um, scale factor would be. So this is my, this will be my new image, if you want to call it that, and this will be my pre-image. And CD here would correspond with ST and they're similar <clears throat> so if I just count and you can see it on your page uh, this is three spaces from D to C and from T to S is six spaces so my new image is going to be twice the size of my old my old pre-image my original pre-image six to three reduces to two to one so there's a two to one ratio <clears throat> from my new QRST to my old ABCD. Um, so what I want to do is figure out which one could be the co possible coordinate for point Q, and point Q here would coordinate, excuse me, would correspond with A. So it's going to need to be down here somewhere. There are a couple things you can do. You can test out your first couple and see where they land and see if that would even make any sense. Like this one would be 6, negative 4, so it would be over here. That makes no sense whatsoever for Q. <coughs> And then this one would be 7, negative 7, which, of course, would make no sense for Q. So neither of these would be the correct answer. <clears throat> then to figure out if it's negative 3, negative 7, or negative 2, negative 4, you could probably figure it out by just looking at it. Um, but you could actually use, um, like from here to here, is 3, and then 1. Here's your... This is 3, and this would be 1 if you were to kind of make a right angle here. If you were to go straight down here, this would need to be 6, and this would need to be 2 in order for it to be a 3 to 1 ratio. And in order for that to work out, it would need to be the negative 3, negative 7. So you could work it out, something like that. Um, that would make the most sense there. So that's our 6 to, our five, our six to 2 ratio, which is 3 to 1. Hopefully that made sense for you. Number 50, uh, we're getting into the uh, some different things here. This one can be worked a couple different ways. Um, I'm going to work it a different way than the website works it. The, the website works it out with geometric mean, with the altitude being the geometric mean of the two pieces of the hypotenuse. And you're missing this piece of the hypotenuse, so you would have to find that first by using um, that this side over here is the geometric mean of this piece of the hypotenuse and the whole entire hypotenuse. So you could do that. Um, actually, why don't we just do it that way? So let's just practice geometric mean. You just have to do it twice on this problem because you have two variables um, and what they're looking for. It says, Darian, maybe I should read the problem, <clears throat> is building a support H for his roof. In order to properly support his roof, H needs to be the altitude of the triangular roof XYZ. What is the length of the beam needed to create the support? <clears throat> so they want to know the length of H here. And um, H is the altitude, and it is the geometric mean of the two pieces of the hypotenuse here. And so we only know the whole thing. We don't know the pieces, either one. So the first thing we would need to do is figure out how to find one of these two pieces. And you could find either one uh, by using the sides over here. And if you remember from your lessons with geometric mean, I'm going to use the short side. Um, 
it, that short side over there is the geometric mean, which means, remember, you put that number in the top of one fraction and the bottom of the other fraction, um, diagonal from each other, of the piece of the hypotenuse that touches that leg. And so I'm just going to call it X. So the piece of the hypotenuse that touches that leg um, and the whole entire hypotenuse. So if you remember from our lessons, the, um, the well, the piece of the, the piece of the hypotenuse that touches the leg that you're talking about and the whole thing. And so you just cross multiply then. So you get 6.3x equals 9.61. And then dividing each side by 6.3, you get x equals 1.5. And so that'll be the length of wx, which is the, the little piece here that we were looking for. So now that we have that piece, we can subtract from 6.3 to get this piece. Uh, which will be 4.8. And now you can use that for finding the altitude here, the height of this right triangle, the larger right triangle. So 4.8 and 1.5 because altitude uh, of this right triangle is the geometric mean of the two pieces of the hypotenuse that are cut by that altitude. And so we get h squared equals 7.2 when you multiply 4.8 by 1.5 and then you take the square root of that and it will be approximately 2.68 meters for your altitude. Okay, that's good. The other way to do it would be to untangle these three right triangles and then remember since they're all similar by that altitude theorem in right triangles, um, then you set up a proportion based on those sides. But uh, if you could remember geometric mean, that would actually be the most straightforward, simple way to do it. All right, let's get into some trigonometric ratios here. Killian's friend got her skydiving lesson for her birthday. <clears throat> her helicopter took off from the skydiving center, ascending at an angle of 37 degrees, and traveled a distance of 2.1 kilometers before she jumped. Suppose Killian fell straight down in a perpendicular line. What is the equation you could use to determine how far from the skydiving center she landed? So we're looking for this distance right here from the skydiving center to where she landed. <clears throat> so remember when you have a right triangle and you only have one of the sides, but you do have one of the angles, you can use trigonometric ratios. Remember sine, and this is something that is given to you on the EOC um, formula sheet or resource page or whatever they call it. The sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. <clears throat> and the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we have um, this angle here, 37 degrees. Always across from the 90 will be your hypotenuse. So we do have the hypotenuse. And because this side touches 37, that will be your adjacent side. So since that's what we're looking for, and we already have this angle, let's do use cosine of 37 degrees equals x, which is the adjacent side, over 2.1, which is the hypotenuse. It says um, solve the equation you wrote to determine her distance, either round to the nearest hundredth place or leave it in terms of the trigonometric function. If you leave it in terms of the trigonometric function, what you'll do is to clear this up and get rid of the 2.1 in the bottom and solve for x is, you'll just multiply both sides by 2.1. And that'll give you x equals 2.1 times cosine of 37. Okay. Or it says um, to the nearest hundredths place, <clears throat> you'll take cosine of 37. So 37 cosine times 2.1 to get 1.68 kilometers. That's how far she is from the diving center. Okay, now um, on number 52, this is gonna be brought up again in another one on number 56, I think. Um, just to remember a couple things, this is something that we learned. What is the relationship between sine of x and cosine of y in the following triangle? So <clears throat> what you need to remember is that complementary angles First of all, remember complementary angles, sum is 90. So, you know, the triangle's angles add up to equal 180. 
So this is already 90, leaving x plus y to equal 90 themselves. But then if you remember from our lesson, the cosine of an angle is equal to, it's hard to write this uh, nice and neatly, the sine of its complement. And I'm just going to put comp, well, I'll spell it out, complement. And then the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of its complement. So that's just something to remember. So here you would have, um, you can check it out if you'd like, sine of x, for example. So the sine of x would be opposite over hypotenuse, right? The cosine of y, so its complement, it's the cosine of its complement would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So notice the sine of x is the same as the cosine of y. So they're equal to each other. So the answer here would be A. Um, and you could even set it up to help yourself remember that. Um, but the cosine of an angle is equal to the sine of its complement. We're going to be seeing that again on number 56. So hold on to that thought. The picture below shows the path that Greg walks his dog. The cell phone tower is 10 feet tall. Greg is tired and wants to take a break when he gets to the tree. And I actually changed this to make it a little bit more uh, clear. How much further will he have to walk from the tree to the tower? It's a little bit unclear of what distance you're looking for. So I'm going to just go ahead and... and uh, define it as we're looking for the distance from the tree to the cell phone tower, okay? That'll help us out. Um, so what we're looking for is x here. We have ourselves a right triangle. We have two right triangles actually, and um, I'm going to use this right triangle here, and I have a 30 degree angle here, and this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side of this 30 degree angle. So I'm looking at this right triangle, the smaller one on the right. So I have the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite over the adjacent side. If you see it a different way and you solve it a different way, tangent of 45 or something like that, you'll still get, um, which would be this whole angle here. It would take a little finagling to figure it out, but you would still end up with the same answer as we get here. But Multiply each side by 10. Excuse my pen there, but tangent of 30 times 10, and that'll give you your x. So x equals around 5.77, and so the closest thing would be 5.7 there for that one. Okay. If you interpreted that last problem as finding the distance from where he stands to the tree, then that would be 4.2. So, I mean, the way they've written it, it's a little bit unclear. But if that's the one, if that's what you thought it was asking, then the answer would be C. Hopefully on the EOC, they have nice, clear questions where you're not going to be confused. From what I understand, they're pretty clear. I've never heard anything different than that. So. Two cars start the race from the same point A and travel along the directions of AC and AD, as shown below. What is CD, the distance between the cars? So let me just follow me here for just a second, okay? We have this right triangle here and we have this AC. Now watch, follow me. For me, this is the most direct route or route. Um, we have a straight line right here, right? And this is 60 degrees over here. Straight line is 180 degrees. If that's 60, then this would have to be 120, correct? Because 120 plus 60 is 180. Well, if I do that, and I know that this is 30, 
Okay, that's 150 of 180. So what would this have to be? Also 30, correct? And when you have a triangle with base angles congruent, what kind of triangle do you know that it is? Isosceles, which means this side would be equal to this side. Let me tell you why that matters. Because this is also x, because they're the same. Now you can use a trigonometric ratio with this right triangle to find that missing side. You could also use 30, 60, 90 triangles if you could remember that because this is a 30, 60, 90. Um, so you could also do that, but um, either way, you're going to get the same answer. So on here, what I might do would use um, would be to use this as this 60 degree angle here, and I know that I have the opposite side, so that would be the sine over the adjacent side, which is x. And when I find that, I'll have this length right here. Now look, this time we have the x in the bottom, so watch what happens because it may have been a while since you've done this. So here's what you have, um, but you need to move the sign of 60 on the other side here in case, here I don't want anybody to be confused, so let's rewrite this. Okay, so to solve for x, since this is multiplication, to undo, you divide by the thing you're trying to get rid of, remember? And so now, you're going to plug this in your calculator, 100 divided by the sine of 60 in it. If you would like to do sine of 60, write that number here, and then go 100 divided by that, that'll be fine. Or you can use your parentheses in your calculator, 100 divided by 60 sine on those calculators that we use. But you should get 115.47, which would be A. And for whatever reason, my computer thinks I'm plugging in things to my audio jack, and I'm not. So it did that in the first video. But, uh, okay, hopefully that helped you out on that one. Number 55, the people of Riverton want to, wanted to build a bridge across a nearby river. Since they were poor swimmers, their king, Trigonomus, agreed to measure the width of the river without actually crossing it. Trigonomus spotted a tree across the river and marked the spot directly across from it. Then he walked another 10 meters down the river to find and found that the angle between his side of the river and the line connecting him to the tree was 40 degrees. I don't know how he did that, but he did. What is the width of the river? So from here to here, the width of the river, either round to the nearest hundredths place or leave in terms of the trigonometric function. Explain why using any other trigonometric function to solve would not be appropriate. So we're just looking for the opposite side from the 40 degree angle in a 90 degree triangle, a right triangle. And we have the adjacent side. So the reason why we would use tangent is because all we have are the opposite and the adjacent sides. Any other would not be appropriate because we're, we don't have the hypotenuse. So we couldn't use sine or cosine. So that would be your reason why you can only use tangent. And it says to either leave it as a trigonometric function, which would be x equals 10 times the tangent of 40. You don't have to use these parentheses in there. Or Tangent of 40 times 10 gives you 8.39 meters. Just pay attention on the EOC what they ask you, how they ask you to leave your answers in what they ask you to leave them in terms of as to whether you need to do this or this. Okay. Okay, 56 will bring us back to what we did on 52, the complementary angles. Um, sine, for example, is equal to or an angle's sine is equal to the it's the cosine of its complement so over here um, the sine of this angle it says solve for m if the sine of this angle just pretend that doesn't say 18m minus 12 just say this angle is equal to the cosine of this angle so what that would mean about these two angles is they're complements of each other that means this angle plus this angle has to equal 90 because the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of its complement. So here's what that means for you. It means 18m minus 12 plus 7m plus 2 is equal to 90. 
It means they're complementary angles. So you can think about that. Um, you can stop this, think about it, rewind it, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to keep going here. 18m plus 7m gives you 25m, combining like terms, minus 10 equals 90. 25m equals 100. I left off my 5. And so m equals 4, and that's what they're asking for. Now, if you hear in the background some snoring, my great Dane is sleeping <laughs> beside me. So uh, excuse him if you hear that. Um, on 57 is something we actually have not covered in my class. So real quickly, I wanted to reciprocals. I wanted to tell you about some reciprocals of um, some trigonometric functions really quickly. Um, you know, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So in the SOHCAHTOA. Well, cosecant is its reciprocal. It's the opposite. It's hypotenuse over opposite. Okay, cosine, as you know, is the ka in SOHCAHTOA. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Its reciprocal is called the secant, hypotenuse over adjacent. And one way you can remember this is, and I don't know how else to remember, but SC and CS, the S and the Cs go together. It, it's not the S's and the S's, but it's the S and the C and the S and the C. That may or may not help you. So look what, look what we have here. It says the picture below, or the picture shows a hamster sliding down a ramp. What is the distance in feet that the hamster has to travel? to move from point A to point C. Um, so we're looking for this length here. We're looking for the hypotenuse. So we know we need either need the cosine or the sine, and, and I'm going to go ahead and just say you are going to either need the cosecant or the secant. That's why I introduced those. So um, if you did sine opposite over hypotenuse, you could, but none of these would be that choice. Um, if you were solving this, it would end up being x equals 15 divided by sine of 40. So that's the sine. Well, if you use the cosecant of 40, since we have the opposite in the hypotenuse, we know it's got to be either sine or cosecant. If you use the cosecant of 40, it would be hypotenuse over opposite, which would give you the 15 here and the 15 here. And that gives you x equals 15 cosecant of 40. So the answer would be b. So um, I know that on your reference sheet, that's what it's called, not resource sheet. On the reference sheet, they give you sine and cosine. But just try to remember that the reciprocal of sine is cosecant and the reciprocal of cosine is secant. Lots of stuff for you to remember, and I'm really sorry about that. You guys are going to do great, though. We're going to have 100% pass rate. You guys are going to be awesome. No worries. No worries. Um, just do your part. Do your part. Practice and study. You know practice makes better. Nara created two right triangles. This little one here and this bigger one on the right. She started with triangle JKL and, oh, here it is, JKL, and drew the altitude from point K to the side JL. The diagram below shows triangle JKL and some of its measurements in centimeters. You have 5 here, 12 here. Based on the information in the diagram, what is the measure of x to the nearest tenth of a centimeter? So this one you, and I'm, you know, be prepared to do problems like this. You have two different things in here that you have to remember. You have your 30, 60, 90 triangles, or you could also use trigonometric ratios. And you're also going to have Pythagorean Theorem because once you find this side here by using the triangle on the left, you'll be able to then use Pythagorean Theorem because you'll have two sides of this right triangle over here. So a couple of different things you could do. This is a 30-60-90 triangle. And um, this is the long side across from the 60. Remember the hypotenuse is across from the 90. And if you remember, to go from the short to the long, you multiply by the square root of 3. So to go from the long to the short, you divide by the square root of 3. Now, we're dealing a lot here in decimals. So 
um, you could actually say 5 divided by square root of 3 and you would get the same number you would get if you do tangent which I'm going to show you in just a second. So if you say 5 divided by the square root of 3 you will get what you get here in a second when I show you um, using the tangent. Um, if you pick like let's just um, I'm going to do tangent and pick uh, the 30 degree angle. So if we say tangent of 30 degrees equals and we've got opposite which is the X that's what we're looking for actually let's call it Y since we already have an X down there over the 5 here adjacent and then you multiply both sides by 5 tangent of 30 times 5 you would also get 2.89 okay so either way you don't have to remember 30 60 90 in this one you can use the tangent um, then we can use that in Pythagorean theorem. This is a leg. We have the hypotenuse. We're looking, for, or we have a leg. We're looking for another leg, and we have the hypotenuse. So that would be your a squared plus your b squared. I'm going to put this in parentheses just to emphasize that that squared equals your c squared. So um, square this, subtract this squared, and you'll get x squared equals 135. I'm going to bring it way out to like the fourth place and then I'll take the square root of each and x is approximately equal to 11.6. It said to the nearest tenth of a centimeter and of course if you have an answer like this it would be written like this. A decimal gets its very own box. Okay, again, pause that, play it back, watch it again. 59, a tackle shop and restaurant are located on the, on the shore of a lake and are 32 meters apart. A boat on the lake heading toward the tackle shop is a distance of 77 meters from the tackle shop here. The situation is shown in the diagram below where point T represents the location of the tackle shop. I hope you all aren't bored because I'm my voice is kind of making me a little bit bored, sorry. Point R represents the location of the restaurant and B represents the location of the boat. The driver of the boat wants to change direction to sail toward the restaurant, which is the following is close to the value of X. So we're looking for this measure now. So this time we're, we're looking for the angle measure. And um, we have the opposite, we have the adjacent. So that's going to be tangent. And I haven't written this yet. I totally didn't think to write it, but Sokotoa. This is the toa part, tangent. We've talked about it, but it's tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So we're looking for the tangent of x is equal to, remember that's the um, angle we're looking for. Opposite will be 32 and adjacent will be 77. And remember for this one, this is the, um, um, the inverse tangent, which means in your calculator, let me think of how we use our calculators. It's been a while since I've actually done this. Um, give me one second. All right, I don't have one with me, but um, first let me write it like this. It's the inverse tangent, and this would be the 32 over 77. So if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, I wish I had one here. I'm at my house. so. Um, I'm pretty sure the way you plug it in is you say 32 divided by 77 and you get that answer and then you hit the second button and then the tangent button and then that will give you your answer. So basically you're saying the angle whose tangent is 32 divided by 77 and so that answer would be 123. The angle whose tangent is 32 over 77. So 32 divided by 77, be, make sure you press equals and then second tan, and that will give you the angle whose tangent is that. And last one for this video Mr. Rose is remodeling his house by adding a room to one side, as shown in the diagram below. In order to determine the length of the boards he needs for the roof of the room, he must calculate the distance from point A to point D. What is the length to the nearest tenth of a foot of AD? So on this one, you just kind of have to look at the stuff that you don't, look, like throw away the stuff that you don't need um, and focus in on, on just this right triangle right here. We're looking for this roof 
we have this right triangle. Anytime you have a right triangle and you have an angle and you have the length of a side, you can use trigonometric ratios. So we have a right triangle here. We do have an angle that's 25 degrees. We do have a side length that's opposite that angle at 7, and we are looking for the hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse would be sine. So if we say the sine of 25 is equal to 7 over x. Now if you remember from before, what happens when you have x in the bottom is in the end, x will equal 7 divided by sine of 25. Go back and watch that other one if you need to see how to solve for that. And so you just say sine divided by parentheses, excuse me, 7 divided by parentheses 25 sine equals, close parentheses, equals, it'll be approximately equal to 16.6 feet. Okay, that's the end of this video. Hopefully that has helped, and I will see you next time.